Welcome to SaulCast. Tonight, we're talking about Season 5, Episode 6 of Better Call Saul, titled Wexler vs. Goodman. This is our instant take. We just watched the episode, so these will be our raw, immediate reactions to having seen it, but make sure to check back later in the week where we'll have our full recap and analysis. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube on our channel One Take, make sure to hit the link in the description that'll take you to our podcast so you too can hear that recap. My name's Gil. I'm here with my brother Adam. Hello. And my other brother slash tech guy, Alun. Yo. With that, let's jump into tonight's episode. So Kim and Jimmy, let's just go right to that last scene. They're arguing... It seems like Kim is done with Jimmy. I can't keep doing this. We've got to we got to put a stop to this, or we can get married. Adam, Kim has been every time. I think I understand where she's going. She consistently surprises me. When she went to see Jimmy in court a couple of episodes ago, I thought she was going to be disgusted with his tactics. She asked him to help with Acker. Here, I thought this is it. They're done. This, what the hell happened? Uh, well, this is a, it's not a surprise. This is like classic Kim because every time she looks like it's it, okay, this is the last straw for her. She decides to double down with him, right? right? Th- this goes to what I've been saying every episode, which is she needs to pick a side of the morality coin. Mm-hmm. And I think this is her finally realizing she has to go all in on the good side or the bad side. AKA get married or completely separate. Are you saying getting married is the good side? <laughs> no, that's, that's <laughs> a bad side. <laughs> that's a bad side. Joining Saul Goodman in his antics for life. I didn't read the scene as her saying, I'm okay with what Jimmy did. And in the future, I want to be involved in these schemes. Usually I connect the two where when she's talking about Saul, it's Saul, the person she loves, but combined with that, it's, her deciding to get involved in these immoral gray areas. For some reason in this scene, it felt to me like that was a very, she wanted Jimmy. I didn't necessarily see her picking one side of the coin, good versus bad for lack of a better term. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't picture them being married as her saying, I'll be your, your partner in crime for the rest of her lives. I thought of it more as the only way I'll be able to trust you when you're using me in these schemes is if I know that at the end of the day, we're husband and wife. Yeah. I mean, I always picture it as more of a subconscious thing that she might not even realize that this is what she's doing. Right. Potentially. Now I will say it's, I'm very deliberate that this is the episode where they chose to show us a flashback to Kim's childhood. And I'm sure there is something in that scene, which tells us a little bit about why Kim is the way that she is. We see that her mother was an alcoholic, that Kim sort of had to take care of herself to some degree. I need to rewatch the episode. I need to think about it some more. And so I don't know what the connection is yet, but there must be something where I don't know if Kim considers marriage to be this very special thing where once, I guess most people do, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if in her mind, she said right before the marriage thing, she said, this is what you do. You lie. I lie. Let's get married. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to piece it together. I can't figure it out yet. Uh, do you, is it possible that she drank much more wine than we realized? Because <laughs> as far as we could tell, she poured it, but she didn't have a sip. I don't know if she was just chugging it on the way home. Yeah, she was just like, let's get married, Jimmy. Yeah. From Saul Goodman or whatever his name is. <laughs> more like Saul Badman. <laughs> <laughs> Never do that again. <laughs> I'm going to do that to you later. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> so we're going to try and get to the bottom of this, but that may not happen in the instant take. That's why you've got to come back for the full recap. But rewinding a little bit, why did Saul betray her, or sandbag her in that meeting? Because he was so proud of his work. He loved it. He, 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 he wasn't just proud of the videos that he made, but he was proud of the whole scheme, the whole idea. Uh, he needed to to execute. Right. Yeah. And I think Kim calls it out because she says, you won. Jimmy keeps saying, everybody won. And to some degree, he's right. 
Acker won. Uh, Kim, I mean, he, he's not wrong when he lists out the people who benefit from this, but really she's saying it was about him winning. It wasn't even as it maybe in his mind, it was also about Kim winning. He might be honest when he said you and I won, even though he did it without her knowledge, but he wants to win. He even compared it to a home run. Yeah. Right. And so it's just that obsession where he just has to win. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, and, and part of, Part of that must come from the relationship he had with Chuck and just the like the basic sense of competition, right? Right, right. There was the uh, karaoke song <laughs> that Jimmy and Chuck sang together. Mm-hmm. Winner takes, takes it, it all. all. <laughs> oh, tune in later this week for our full recap of the episode to hear me performing that live at karaoke yeah, uh, in honor of... <laughs> What? Well, you sent me the clip. I, you know, oh, it wasn't good. I could have spliced it in in a preview. No, I, yeah. Oh wait, did you? I can't remember. No, I didn't. You know. Oh, because it wasn't worth. Well, it. listen it wasn't again. Worthy. It was, okay. All right, never mind. You may hear it. You may not hear it. <laughs> Either way, I did it the the week before this season premiered. Uh, I performed it at karaoke in honor of the upcoming season. <laughs> wow, this, this YouTube video has more drama than Better Call Saul. Itself. Yeah, it's going to be a lot. Let's of... Let's get uh, married. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, when, were you surprised? So when Kim shows up and tells Saul, you know, I want to call it off. We're not doing this. Did any part of you think that he was really not going to go through with it? No. no. <laughs> you knew he was going to. He had to. You could yeah. see it. he did not want to quit at all. He tried so hard to convince her to keep going through yeah. it. Yeah, and, and I, I don't think any part of him felt bad about it either. No, he... Yeah, and I was just going to say, and I think he really didn't want her to come in the store and help clean up because he wanted to keep filming and finish up what they were working on. Yeah. Because he still was filming his part. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. I think the writers of this show, they, they're they playing with us so much because one of the benefits of this being a prequel is that we go in with these built-in expectations, which on one hand, I think most writers would see that as a problem. People know where this is going. I think the writers of Better Call Saul, they use it against us. They know that we're all expecting Kim to disappear at some point. Yeah. So they keep saying, here's how it happens. <laughs> Kim is done with him. Oh, wait. No, she's not. <laughs> and I, it's so effective. It gets me. I don't know how many more times I can fall for this, but it worked on me again this episode. And also, again, for all we know, they do get married and they're together throughout the entire. You know, Breaking I kind of hope. Show. I hope that's what happens because <laughs> I like them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Goodman. Those two crazy kids are gonna work this out. <laughs> we got. We definitely need to think more about the the clip of her as a as a child. Yeah. Why is that meant to somehow explain her? psychology here yeah i don't think we're gonna figure it out right now but right i think it must be because but we've seen this aspect of kim many times the flip-flopping constantly having to go back to jimmy but this was maybe the most extreme example we've seen i mean we've never seen a betrayal of this level so public so humiliating and then for her to flip so far back in terms of flip-flopping so the fact that this was maybe the most extreme example we've seen, I think it's very deliberate. They chose this to be the episode where we see that flashback. So there must be something in that. Uh, and as an aside, I, when she was kind of uh, tearing him a new one at the end, and she said, you always, uh, I'm the sucker. You end up playing me. She said something about him doing it again, and she didn't explicitly say it but i think she was actually talking about the courtroom when uh jimmy gave that impassioned speech about chuck right yeah i think you're right and she started crying i think she was alluding to that but she, he has no idea right right yeah, yeah. I, I was actually trying to remember i was like what is he talking about but what is she talking about but like that is definitely the one and i think you're right i don't think he even knows he's probably like, what is she talking about yeah uh, copyright infringement. So we were right. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was right. That was the thing they found. And why do you think they? Why wasn't that enough? They had the copyright infringement claim, but Jimmy also had to throw in this crazy defamatory commercial. I think it just puts more pressure on, and it's 
Kevin was ready for a protracted legal battle with Mr. Acker. He was ready to go years uh, fighting against him if mm-hmm. he had to. But I don't think he's ready to go for years with that while his re- reputation is getting totally destroyed too. Right. I think it wouldn't have been the copyright infringement claim isn't public enough. And even if it was public, most people would look at that and say, I mean, I guess you could twist that in a way to say they screwed over this woman, but making it so public and effective with this commercial, it just cranks the pressure up. Mm -hmm. I mean, they accused him of everything from like sexual harassment to people getting sick from the mold (laughs) inside the bank. Or you you get, you end up itchy. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Uh, Did you, I think uh, a couple of us, when we were watching this, I heard a few I've never hated Saul this much before. What were your feelings towards in this episode? I think what I said was, it was in this moment that Saul truly <laughs> became Heisenberg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I couldn't... He, he, I mean, he's just evil. And it's very it's hilarious and it's super clever, but uh, it's getting to the point where I, I don't like what he's doing to other people. Right, right. We didn't yeah. even mention poor Howard. Oh, oh yeah, that yeah that was <laughs> that was horrible. It's almost not even funny anymore. Well, I laughed. Yeah, no, it was yeah, funny. Yeah, it was laugh. really yeah. funny. <laughs> but he, I mean, he doesn't deserve it. What what did Howard do exactly to to deserve? Like, he basically now has this like hidden force just tormenting him. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't even know why it's happening to yeah. him. And I mean, we keep going back to this, but I just keep wondering. Where is the Howard storyline going? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know where it's going, but I think this confirms that the whole him throwing the bowling balls at his car was that's all it was. It wasn't part of some kind of scheme. It was just, oh, I want to I want to screw with Howard. (laughs) Right, right. And he's going to keep screwing with Howard until when? When does it end? It's a hobby. (laughs) <laughs> so, like, I mean, most ho- if if you have a hobby that you enjoy, you just keep doing it. <laughs> the next uh, gene flash forward is, uh, <laughs> hey, Howard, is your refrigerator running? <laughs> <laughs> he mails him like packages full of sand and or like glitter bombs or things like that just to <laughs> screw with him. Like, Jimmy, are you still uh, thinking about that job interview? That job is like, it's been 10 years, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to feel about Saul at this point because I hated him when he was messing with Kim. I hated him when he was messing with Howard. And then at the end, Kim's flip-flop just threw me for a, a loop because now I'm, I'm wondering. I hated him mostly because he betrayed Kim, but I don't want to feel betrayed on her behalf. If she sees something here where, I don't know, if she wants to marry him now, then maybe there's just something about their relationship I don't understand. So right now I don't hate Saul, but there were moments this episode where I did. I feel like most relationships are confusing. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I will still say I do not hate Saul when he's messing with Howard. No. Howard was pretty condescending to Saul in the past. So eh. no, you don't think he somewhat, was? but uh, maybe it's just because the focus was so much on Chuck. I never thought Howard was. I always thought Howard was trying to be cordial, professional, but he was stuck in the middle of a difficult situation. Yeah, I'm not saying Howard deserves any of this. Yeah, but I, I, you know, in the context of this being a TV show, TV show, I enjoy it. I actually do get a little frustrated when he messes with Kim. That. I do I do think he's kind of a jerk. One's gone soft. Cases. I do have some actual emotions. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, come on, Howard. He, he, a few dents in his car isn't a big deal. He'll pay for that, no problem. Well, but this episode, I think, was a, a little bit harder to recover from. <laughs> is now he's starting to actually cause damage to his reputation. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, but, I mean, what would you do if that happened to you? <laughs> Uh, probably what Howard did. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it's funny. The guy that Howard was with was like, "You, you want me to like give you a moment?" <laughs> he seemed to be kind of understanding. Howard, yeah, I've yeah. dealt with this plenty of times before. You gotta just give them what they want. Yeah. Let me give you a minute to handle this. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Howard gave Jimmy a hard time early on in the series, 
But there was that big moment where we find out he was basically doing all of that at Chuck's request. Mm -hmm. And then my impression since then has been Howard felt caught in the middle between the two brothers. And I can understand from Jimmy's perspective why he feels the way he does, but I very much feel bad for Howard. And I just can't, I'm so curious where the Howard storyline is going. Will Howard eventually realize Jimmy's doing this to him? Will Jimmy get almost get frustrated that he's not getting credit for it? <laughs> and he'll, he'll announce it to Howard. Howard, I did all that to you. And then Howard's, <laughs> why? <laughs> I thought then, we were friends. And then with his new namaste mentality, he will be like, Saul, I know. I forgive you. Come work for me. Oh, that'll okay. annoy him so bad. <laughs> I deserved everything you did to me. <laughs> Any other thoughts on Saul, Kim, mm. Kevin? How uh, great was uh, Saul's guitar playing when he was like <laughs> when he was waiting for Kim to come home and confront him? He's just very poorly strumming the guitar. <laughs> is that is that the first song everybody learns on the guitar? I think so. Yeah. Wait, what song was dun, it? Dun dun uh, dun, uh, dun 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 dun. Oh, what's it called? I think that's it. Yeah. 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 And uh, <laughs> how about when he's whistling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're in the money. <laughs> that was good. He just knows how to piss people off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the look on Kevin's face after Saul left and all the lawyers are arguing and Kevin is just staring into mm. space. <laughs> Kim, can I go use the bathroom or the men's room or whatever? He was just saw got under his skin, and, and my mind went right to that scene in Breaking Bad when uh, that German executive at Madrigal got busted, and he went to the bathroom and grabbed the like AED, uh, you know, heart, uh, defibrillator, took it to the bathroom, stuck the leads in his mouth, and just committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think Kevin would do that, but I, I it reminded me of that scene. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, well. We got Nacho back this episode. We haven't seen him in a little while. And uh, big thing that happens is Gus tells Nacho, from now on, you report to Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Which, that makes me feel a lot more comfortable for Nacho. I mm. feel like Mike still has a soft spot for him and is going to look out for him. And I was trying to remember, is Gus aware that Mike and Nacho have any sort of history? Because if he if he was aware, I would think this is not a great idea. Because leaving the two of them together, Mike does have that soft spot mm. for Nacho. And so the first thought I had is this is a bad idea for Gus. But I'm trying to remember if Gus would have any reason to know they have that history. I suspect the answer is he wouldn't have any reason to, to know that. I'm not sure. Does Gus know why Hector had the stroke? Yeah, that's how he has control over Nacho now. He said, you know, I know what you did. I, you, you have to do anything I say from now on. Mm -hmm. So, okay, but he doesn't know that Mike was involved with that at one point. Right. He said, I don't, Mike wasn't. Because Nacho said, Nacho knew him by name. He said Michael. Yeah, like, that's true. Yeah. So I, I think. The, you're the gringo Lalo was talking about? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to I'll figure have to do that some out. digging yeah. on this. Um, and it seems like. We we were wondering last episode, are we going to see Mike ruminating and debating over joining Gus, or did we essentially see the moment where he's convinced? And here, it's sort of a done deal. Mike is clearly aligned with Gus now, and he's accepted that position. Yeah, the, and, and Mike is already starting to look like the Mike we know and love from Breaking Bad, right? Like, he's paternal, and he has he's he seems to just always know what to do. Right, and we saw some great Mike scheming this episode. We haven't seen, we haven't gotten a great Mike scheme from A to Z in a while. Yeah, we started to last episode where he starts ripping wires apart, and then that lady ruined it by giving him a phone <laughs> charger. <laughs> but here we basically see him take a picture of Lalo's car, goes to a witness from the travel wire incident, and he says, "This is the uh, car you saw," and. I don't think she actually saw the car. I think she sort of did, and he kind of manipulated yeah. her into almost believing that's the car. Presses her to call the cops and report the car. Then he reports the car, and then later on, finally, he gets all the pieces in place. 
He uses a police radio, calls the cops, yeah. say the car's been spotted, blah, blah, blah. And Lalo gets surrounded. I, I love watching Mike do his just do that thing. Yeah, it was so satisfying. Did you have any idea where he was going with all that? No, I mean, not until he started calling that in. And I was like, oh, this is genius. <laughs> this whole scheme felt like something Saul would do if he was a little more badass of a person. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Mike is right. like... He did, <laughs> Saul needs to operate from behind the shield of the law. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. It's exactly. very Saul like, yeah. all this yeah. scheming. And um, Lalo. So, Mike versus Lalo, the showdown we've all been waiting for. Is the showdown over? Did Mike already win? Because we see Lalo reach for a gun when it's one cop. Then, like, five more cops show up and he drops his keys out the window. Episode is over. And I should say, we don't watch the next time on previews. We like to avoid all spoilers, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we encourage you to do the same. It's right. more enjoyable that way. Yeah, exactly. and we don't look as dumb. Right. <laughs> <laughs> in the preview, you can see that Lalo and Mike get in a fist fight. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's over? Did he Did he take Lalo out of commission? Mm, I hope not. I, I love Lalo. I, yeah, I don't know. that. This is like a very unceremonious end for Lalo. I don't, yeah. I don't think it's over. The only way he can get out of it now, though, it's not a physical escape. I mean, we know he can do parkour <laughs> we, at the travel wire scene. We saw him jump up. <laughs> we know he's fast. But do jails, do prisons have ceilings? <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever thought to move these ceiling tiles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to pull a Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like 40 years from now? <laughs> so in the Gene timeline, he shows up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think the only way he can get out of it is by talking. Can he? Is there information he can give up? Can he give up Hector? I don't know. There's got to be some chip he can play with the cops. I don't really see any other way out of it. I well, can't... we know we know he's not going to give up Hector, right? Because Hector is a free man all the way up through Breaking Bad, and Gus would make sure that he stays free. It could be. So we know he ha- He knows some stuff about Gus. Uh, when Nacho and Gus talk, Nacho mentions that Lalo is reporting some of Gus's people to the cops so they can make some arrests. So Lalo probably hasn't given up all the information he has. And the cops, well, they're, they're arresting. I was going to say, they don't know everything he's involved in. But what they're arresting him for is murder. Yeah. You know, and who knows how solid the evidence is there. I, I don't know if the information he had. I'm skeptical that the information he has to bargain with would be enough mm. to get him off of out of a murder charge. Okay, this this brings me back to the the line from Breaking Bad that we keep puzzling over, which was when Saul is out in the desert, he thinks he's going to get killed. He says, "Did Lalo send you? It wasn't me. It was, Ign- it was Ignacio." Now, what if the reason he thinks Lalo might still be alive is that he's been in jail the whole time? Could be. And actually, I can't believe this didn't occur to me. But obviously, Saul has to be the one now to defend Lalo. Because who is Lalo going to call? Who's his lawyer? It's Saul Goodman <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. So that is going to be oh. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and this is great. Saul, Saul's going to be in an impossible position right now. How so? Because he's he has to defend the cartel while also being right. And like now Gus is going to be thinking about him. Like yeah. Gus is the scariest person on this show. And now he's going to be like, who's first of all, who's the guy who, who flipped uh crazy eight and got made it so that I'm losing all of my dealers. Right. Yeah. It's Saul Goodman. And now who is it that's has to defend Lalo? Saul Goodman. Gus is not going to like him. Wow. So we were excited about Mike versus Lalo, but we might now see Saul versus Gus and super professional straight laced Gus facing down Saul Goodman. That's going to be incredible. And Gus has Mike on his team now. <laughs> yeah. This but, is just going to be a but mess. But we also <laughs> we know in the long run that Mike and Saul end up being connected, mm-hmm. right? And that Mike does some jobs for Saul. And I'm not sure exactly how this happened in Breaking Bad anymore, but where did Gus come from in, in terms of hit getting connected with Walt and Jesse? I think Saul. Right. So I, yeah. I think he's going to manage to get over on. He, you know, he's like a cockroach. Like he's just right. going to survive all this. And I think he's just going to glue himself to the, the more successful party. 
Right. And going back to the line from Breaking Bad, did Lalo send you? So clearly Saul has reason to think Lalo would see Saul as a traitor. Mm. So I think the, the solid prediction would be Saul aligning himself with yes. Gus. Also, I, I think what we're seeing is, what we've been seeing this whole series is Saul ends up in some kind of seemingly impossible situation and he manages to 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 wave his hands and talk his way out of something that no one else on earth could do, right? Right. And I think every season we see him getting himself into some other kind of side quest or like weird legal battle. This <laughs> this season it's the Mesa Verde stuff, it's the conflicts with Kim and everything. But it's all training him for some kind of peak moment that's probably going to happen around the time of the series finale right. where I think everything that's happening with Gus and with Lalo and with the cartels, it's all going to center onto him and it's going to look like he's doomed and he's going to figure out a way to survive. And it'll, it'll involve Huel sneaking something into <laughs> or out of someone's pocket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Saul's just going to start crying and then he's like, this worked great last season. It seemed to be working yeah. on it. It's not going to work on Gus. <laughs> Any other final thoughts on this episode? I can't wait to see what Saul does to Howard next. Yeah, <laughs> I think we might get that Chicago sunroof. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy to think that in this show, I'm excited to find out when the head of a drug cartel, Gus, goes head to head with Mike's help against Lalo, and Saul Goodman gets involved. I'm excited about that, and I'm like. Are Kim and Jimmy going to get married? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they both have as much weight. It's 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 awesome. Yeah, so love that love this episode and I can't wait to see what happens in the next 4. And I think with that, we can say thanks for listening, thanks for watching. If you're listening to this as a podcast, make sure to hit the link in the show notes, check out our YouTube channel One Take, where these instant takes are posted as videos. You can see me you can see Adam. Yeah. And you can hear Alun. You can't really see him. You don't yeah. want to see him anyway. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got to work the machinery back here. Yeah. That's right. He's our tech guy. We're told he's good looking, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at him right now. He's a very beautiful man. Thanks. Anyway. Just like Lalo. <laughs> Thank you. So you're going to want to check out the YouTube channel. We've and got Howard. the instant takes on there. <laughs> We're also reviewing Westworld. We're reviewing devs. We're covering movie news, TV news. All kinds of great stuff. So you're going to want to check that out. And again, as a reminder, if you're watching this, hit the link in the show notes in the description. Subscribe to the podcast so you can hear our full recap and analysis later in the week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you on the recap. Huh? Huh? We didn't do, I'm Gil. Yeah, I'm we didn't do that. Back on. I'm Gil. I'm Adam. I'm Alun. And this, this is, is SawCast. Instant take.